Butter. All right, just got my first hit. There we go. This fish are just sitting just inside. Oh, that's a good fish. All right. Oh, yeah. Lock down the drag just a little bit. I think that's going to be a nice trout, guys. What's up, guys? Captain Michael Bell back here with another episode of Eastern Current. Just wanted to bring to you all a tackle tip plus a little bit of fishing video of uh, something that I use a lot during this late fall, early winter, especially when we have a lot of fronts that are coming through, the weather's changing consistently. These trout don't always like to chew um, in all conditions, I'll say that. Like today we're a little pre-front for some rain that's about to come in here in the next couple hours, but we're post-front from this cold front about a day out from that. Yesterday the fish chewed pretty well, but the key to that success was live shrunk. And live shrimp is something that I would suggest anybody out there that, especially targeting trout, keep in your arsenal. I know it's a pain, it's hard to deal with live bait, especially when you gotta go buy it and you gotta keep it alive until you get on the boat and all of that, but it is something that will be a day maker for you some days. Um, and we'll hopefully grab another video here in the next few weeks on just how to help keep your shrimp alive and how to take care of them. Um, especially too with mud minnows and that kind of stuff, but I digress. So the rig that I want to bring to you today is the slip float rig. Um, this is something that we used yesterday that was truly one of the most successful days I've had on the water here in the last few weeks with, um, at least with trout. So first off, I've got, I feel like the rod's a big one. So this is a star rod. This is their stellar light series. This is a seven footer, six to 14 pound line, quarter to five, eight, quarter to a five eighths ounce lure. Um, and I have this rig with 20 pound or 15 pound power pro or something. I don't know what it is exactly, but um, this is like one of my all around live bait rods for me here in uh, Southeastern North Carolina. So first off, I'm gonna start with 14 pound Yozuri Top Knot Mainline, the fluorocarbon version. Um, for me, I feel like this is just something that I fish it year round um, and I step up to 20 pound when it comes time for my redfish and stuff during the summer. But during the winter, water's a little clearer, that sort of thing. Um, I'm gonna stick here with the 14 pound. So as you can tell, I got two two big arm lengths of it so i'm probably 12 to 13 feet of line um so i'm just going to start here i'm going to do a little double uni connect these two guys together um you know any knot of your preference is fine for me i feel like i just tie a double uni pretty quick um had very very few fail so that's what i'm gonna make my main line connection with let's get this guy all set up So now that I got that, got those knots seated, we'll come back and trim that here in a little bit. So I've got my, there's a good six, there's another good six, and about a foot, foot left over. So the first thing I'm going to do to build this rig is start with a peg stopper. So there's several different ones out there. Um, some are made by Six Cents, some are made by Eagle Claw, um, but there's different options and these are what I'm talking about, peg stoppers. These are actually used uh, for the bass guys with punching weights, just to help hold that tungsten or whatever in place when they're flipping mats, that sort of thing. So we're kind of reaching out, grabbing some, some tackle from some other areas. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna feed that line through one of those little metal wire loops, and then you are gonna wanna pull that peg stopper off and pull it up and over your main line. Now you have peg stopper on your main line. So there's that guy. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna slide that guy up. Today I know I'm gonna be fishing probably a lot of eight to 12 feet of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start with getting him up about six feet. Second, it's gonna be a treble hook. So treble hook, this is an EWG um, treble replacement hook actually. It's a very light wire hook but I like that. It just lets the shrimp act as normal as possible. Um, and like I said, I use this rig for not just shrimp, but mullet during the summer to cover water, different things like that. But that EWG for the shrimp, that's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie that guy on. 
again this doesn't have to be a loop knot or anything special just um, this is just a basic uni get that guy on there So we got our uni, get that seated, trim that up. All right, so we got our knot seated there. We're gonna go ahead, trim this tag in. Get that fall on the bottom of the boat, grab that later. We're gonna go back up here to our double uni connection knot here. And let's go ahead and trim this guy. Again, this is just your basic simple um, braid to leader connection, nothing fancy there with the double uni. Got all that settled. Let's go ahead and get that back on the rod. I know this is a lot, a lot of leader, a lot of kind of craziness, but oh, I actually missed one of the most important parts here. All right, guys, so with it being a slip float rig, there's several different options that you have for slip float. So I'm gonna go through those real quick. We got our peg stopper on, we got our 12 foot of leader, 13 feet of leader, whatever it is that you, uh, that you need for the water depths that you're fishing. But there's a couple different styles so this is just a cheap one off of amazon it's a balsa wood slip float um you know got both ends um here's a thrill i like these they're a little narrower they cast a little bit better but they don't hold as much weight so that is something that you are going to have to take into account for the deeper that you're fishing the more weight that you're going to need to get that live shrimp that mullet mud minnow whatever it is that you're fishing down to those fish so just realize, you know, I got three different sizes here. Slip floats, kind of my smallest, lightest for shallower stuff, kind of a medium. This is what we're gonna be fishing with today. And then I've got a big, big, tall slip float. And you're gonna notice there's one thing that's very similar about all of these, and it's that tall, um, tall upright with some kind of indicators on the top. And there's a reason for that. Um, there's a reason that I'm not using just your basic bobber um crimp on or whatever so as i mentioned we're gonna be fishing a lot of different depths with that you want something that can slide up and down the line and be free um that way you know if you've got your traditional popping cork style um float it's great but you're limited to however long your leader is to your bait and then how far or how much you can cast that um you know if you got five foot a leader after your popping cork you can't reel that up and get a good cast with it so and that's the reason i'm not the biggest fan of popping corks you won't see me fish those very much they do have their time and place but it's just not something that i use a ton um instead like i say i use this you can see this one's kind of slimmer on the bottom it's tall but you got this indicator color at the top orange on all of these and chartreuse um and the reason for that is going to be that whenever I cast this out and I'm letting this drift. So we're gonna be making as natural as possible drifts with these live shrimp down either bank edges or floating the shrimp into structure or past structure, whatever the case may be. I wanna see that that float is sitting straight up and down. That means that my line is straight down with the weight pulling at the bottom, which means that my shrimp has gotten down as far as my peg stopper allows as I want it to be and that that thing is riding vertically in the water. Um, if you're a trout fisherman, especially a trout fly fisherman, you know this with indicators and different stuff that you're fishing, whether it's an, a yarn indicator or a thingamabobber, you can look at how that thing's sitting on the water and you can tell where your bait is and how that current's going. So, you know, if your bobber's sitting like this or your float's sitting like this sideways on the water, you know, it's not got any weight and it's not got anything pulling it down. So you know that your bait's not reaching that maximum depth. Um, so for today, like I said, we're going to be using this medium sized guy, balsa wood. That just seems to be one of my, one of my favorites. Um, like I can say, I'll see if I can find these on Amazon or something and link them in the description for you. But we're just going to thread that through. And as you can tell, this thing comes up, it hits that peg stopper. It can't go any further. So, there's our slip float. So the last thing on our list is gonna be a hook. Um, so for me, I like these little EWG replacement hooks, these light wear uh, hooks. We're looking for something that's as natural as possible or allows that shrimp to be as natural as possible when he's down there. So I don't want some big like triple stout, treble hook, 
you know, we're just fishing for trout and they don't need to be um, anything too crazy. And we don't want it to slow that shrimp down from where he's popping or doing whatever he needs to do to while he's down there. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect this guy. With your basic uni. Go ahead and seat that and trim him up. There. So next up is gonna be weight. Uh, as you can see, I have a little box here. This box has got everything from my trebles depending on the situation and a wide, wide range of split shot. So for me, I'm gonna reach over here in the top. I'm gonna to grab a big one and a medium sized one. Crimp those on. I know that's gonna get my bait down. This is something that you're gonna to have to play with um, depending on your current in your area, um, you know, and just depending on the situation that you're in of how much weight you need versus your bait and the float that you're using. So we're gonna take that guy. Come on. Nothing special here, just basic crimp on um, BB size weights. So. so, one thing that I will stress to you that I think for me at least makes a huge difference is I try to get those weights crimped on. I don't know, six inches to a foot above my shrimp. And that way, that weight gets down and that gives your, just like a Carolina rig or anything else, gives your bait a little bit of room to move around and be free from that weight. So he's not just, you know, stuck straight on trying to fight against that hook weight and the weights that you're putting on there to get him down. But, all right. So that there, guys, is a slip float rig. We'll try to get some close ups and some different stuff just to kind of help walk you through it a little bit better, but that's gonna be my basic rig for today. All right guys, so first thing, got my live shrimp, got our float rig here. So I wanna show y'all how to rig up this live shrimp. So with live shrimp, you'll notice right up here on their head, they've got this horn and they got their face. You can kind of see there's a little clear section right there and then this dark spot. It's dark spots there's brain you don't want to hit that so we're going to start right up here in front just where the horn starts to come away from the face there's a little tough section of skeleton there i'm going to go right through that and hook that shrimp only on one prong one prong of that treble the other two i want to leave wide open um that way that i got as much hooking ability as possible so instead of having to recast a hundred times and pull your bait out of the water and put all that extra stress of that hook force on them, I can take and reel up and let that bait slide over five, 10 feet, and then just open up the bell and let it drift right back over the structure. Now this is something that you'll have to play with and figure out exactly what works best for you. Um, you know, if you got really, really heavy currents, it's not gonna be as ideal, but um, these lighter currents that we're dealing with, we can we can definitely do that and take care of our baits a little better. All right, just got my first hit. There we go. This fish is just sitting just inside. Oh, that's a good fish. All right. Oh yeah. Lock down the drag just a little bit. I say. I think that's gonna be a nice trout, guys. All right, boys. Let's see what we got here. First fish of the day, live shrimp on the slip float rig. Looks like a nice one. I don't know what we got, but it was good. No big, big head shake, so it could either be a really big trout or I think it's gonna be a striper. All right guys, sorry, had a little GoPro issue there, but we got our first fish of the day here. Nice little striper. Grab him up here, as you can see, he's got some sores on him, but that is part of being in the river, especially the Cape Fear. So, nice guy there. Um, I don't know if it got on film or not, but I was talking about the trouble hooks. This fish was hooked right here, perfectly in the top of the mouth. So, that's exactly what you're looking for with these trebles. Um, most of the time they get them in the corner of the mouth, these fish are gonna headshot the shrimp. As they're floating down so let's go ahead and get this guy back in the water 
Get everything out of the way here. I'm doing a little revive. Head in the current. And he is off to the races, boys. All right, perfect. First fish of the day. Not sitting exactly where I expected him to be, but we'll take it. We're gonna let this guy go pretty good distance down through there. I wanna almost hit that next section of pilings down there. I'm just gonna see if these fish are sitting off this edge. There we go. That's exactly what it was. Oh, that's beautiful. These fish have not moved up into the shallower water yet. Oh. I don't know, this might be another striper. I'm trying to shoot a trout video today and... Oh, nope, that's Mr. Speckle. Perfect. All right, guys, here we go. Here's the first trout of the day. Not quite the size class that we had yesterday, but we'll take it. Awesome. That's still a pretty good one. Hey right, guys, first trout of the day. Go ahead and get this hook out of the corner of this mouth. And y'all can see, perfect just like the last guy right in the corner. Look that striper. So get all that out of our way. Somebody's calling me, that's all right. We'll deal with that in a second. Yeah. So let's get a measurement on this guy just so y'all get an idea of size here. So nose on the board. He's just shy of 17 inches. And as you notice, my ruler is down in a hatch and that fish flop right there is the reason why. So beautiful fish guys. Awesome. All right, let's get him back in the water. He's nice and feisty. Hey, thanks for playing, bud. Alrighty, guys, here we go. Shrimp number three of the day. The first two have produced a striper and a nice trout. This is a little bit bigger of a shrimp than what we've had on the last two. So let's just see if he'll produce a bigger fish for us. When I'm fishing the shallower stuff, it may be that it's grabbing bottom. And that's the reason why I'm not getting that good drift and I'm seeing that float turn over on its side. So that's a great indicator good uh good reminder um you know just to constantly be paying attention to to your float and to the depths that you're fishing you know you want to that's the beauty of this rig it's so versatile i'm fishing over here six to eight feet of water and um had you know immediately moved over here to 12 15 feet of water and adjusted that slip float and got perfect drift and got a trout on the first one so, oh, there's another one. Beauty. That's another nice trout. Perfect. A little head shaking. Boom, there he is. Heck yeah. Nice. All right, guys, there's another good trout. Like I said, just moved him over to that side there. Right off that ledge. That got him perfect. Alrighty. Another good trout. Come here, buddy. Chill out. Perfect. Good hook placement. Right in the corner of the mouth. Beauty came right out. That guy over the side there. All right, guys. So, first spot. We've been sitting here for I don't know, not even 30 minutes yet. Fishing. Um, so the first fish that we got was a striper. Like I said, we're sitting in about five and a half, six feet of water, and sitting here looking at the Simrad unit. Um, and that first fish came from just inside of us. So he was probably sitting in five feet of water. 
Like I said, we've made a couple drifts. We've kind of worked our way from this outer section of structure and we've kind of slowly worked our way in um, and we didn't get any, any other bites. So we took the slip float rig, pulled that peg stopper up and given ourselves that depth, that eight, nine, 10 feet of water um, depth. So I'm trying to get that shrimp down probably somewhere around seven to eight feet is kind of what I'm shooting for. I may have went a little bit more maybe in that nine foot range because I know it does drop off. Somewhere from the edge is around 10 out to about 15, 20 feet of water, way out off the edge, but we're hitting just real tight to that, to that edge there. Oh, there's another one. Oh yeah, that's a better fish too, guys. Perfect. Oh yeah, another trout. I can feel his head shaking down deep. Let's see if we can get him around that pole. I don't know if we can or not. Oh yeah, we're clear. Let's see if this thing on spot lock. Oh, I didn't put the power pole completely up, so that's great. Boom! There's another little guy. Definitely not quite the size class that we were having yesterday, but we'll take them. Awesome. Well. Oh, there we go. That's another one. Oh yeah, that's a better fish too. Oh yeah, we got some shoulders on them. Alrighty, here we go guys. Hooked up again. This is a better fish. This feels a little better. So, hopefully another Mr. Troutsky. That's what it feels like. And head shakes. Oh yeah. Alright, we're gonna keep him keep his head down so he gets up here beside us. There we go. How about that boys? Another nice little trout. Oh, they're sitting out there deep. They're just not chewing quite as good as I expected them to. Figured today being a little pre-front action with this rain about to come in and everything that they would be chewing their faces off. But this is perfect. This guy hooked himself right there in the corner of the mouth. So I don't even need any pliers to get that guy out. So we're a little, a little late to the hook set, but not too bad. Just that guy out there. Awesome. Nice little Mr. Troutsky. He's about the same as the rest of them, about 16 inches. So thanks for playing. He just hopped himself right back into the water. I guess he was ready to go. If y'all guys found this video helpful, um, I hope y'all will subscribe and take and follow up for some more. We're gonna be having some more videos coming out soon. Um, might do some more slip floating. We might do some different stuff on artificials. Um, I don't know what the winter, what the winter is going to bring for us, but um, hope you guys stay tuned and tune in for another one coming soon. Thanks.